little bit more terminology here. We talk about the stock market and they always trade in what's called symbols. Those are the letters that we see. For McDonald's, they don't spell out M-C-D-O-N-A-L-D-S. They just say M-C-D. That's the three letter symbol for the stock known as McDonald's. So in the market, you're gonna see different symbols. One letter, two letter, three letter, four letter, five letter. Sometimes it's dot OTC. So let's just talk about that for a minute. When we talk about the New York Stock Exchange, these are stocks that trade with up to three letters in them. Three letters in the New York Stock Exchange. In the NASDAQ, it's four letter symbols. So Apple, for instance, is traded in the NASDAQ. It's a four letter symbol, A-A-P-L. Mutual funds, most people don't realize this, they have a symbol. It's a five letter symbol. So for instance, Fidelity Magellan Fund. It's a fund that a lot of people have heard of before. If you wanted to look that up, it's F-M-A-G-X. Each one of your mutual funds has a symbol. Most people don't realize that. But you can look up your mutual fund and the symbol and see exactly what's inside there. And then there's the over-the-counter stocks, the bulletin board stocks, the penny stocks, the pink sheet. You'll notice I've used a number of terms. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but these have different letter combinations. But OTC is typically an indication that it's over-the-counter, OTC. And that's not something we're going to deal with, certainly not within cool trade. It's not something that I'm going to suggest that you do. I would much rather you be dealing with really large companies that have significant volume and good liquidity and the spreads are low. We'll talk about that. I know I'm throwing in a lot of words here. So trading versus investing. What is investing? And then we'll talk about what is trading. Well, really it comes down to the time frame. When you talk about investing, you're buying, and it's typically for the long term. When Warren Buffett buys stock, he doesn't just buy 100 shares or 1,000 shares. He's typically buying millions of shares at a time. Now, he's buying for the long term, and one of the reasons why is he's got so much money invested, he can't just get in and out quickly. Frankly, that's one of the advantages that you and I have over the large investors. We can get in and out quickly. So just think investing is typically long term. It goes with buy and hold, that whole mentality, and you're looking for appreciation. You're buying it at one price, and you're going to sell it later on in the future at a higher price. That's the theory or the thought. So what is trading? Well, trading is typically a shorter term investment. So you're going to get in and out in a shorter term. Now, notice I haven't put any time frames to this. I'll do that in a moment. This is where booking your profits is the goal. And that's exactly what cool trade is designed to do, to book profits, meaning I'm going to buy it, then I'm going to sell it, and I'm going to take my profit off the table and put it in the bank. When you go to, if you ever do, go to Vegas or play cards or gamble or whatever it is, the concept is I've got this many chips and when it grows to this much, we just take some and put it in our pocket and then we just continue to play. That's really the same concept with cool trade, except instead of gambling with the house, we're doing it very strategically with very specific stocks. We're going to enter the trade. We know where we're going to get out. We book our profit. We take the money off the table and then we move on. Now, this right here, you can make money in either directions. In trading itself, most people just buy and then they sell when it goes up. But you can make just as much money even faster when you short stock or make money on the way down. So let's talk about that. But first, let's talk about the time frame in regards to trading and investing. When we're long term, that's 30 days or longer. I know that sounds kind of funny in this day and age, but let's just go less than that for a minute. There's a term called scalping. That's where you're in and out in a few seconds or a few minutes, maybe an hour, but it's just in and out very quickly, taking a few cents out of each share. By the way, most people don't know this, but the average share today is held for 22 seconds. 22 seconds. Now that's not your, you know, your mom and dad's average share because most people that you and I both know just buy and hold for months and years and decades. They don't even think about it. But because of robotic trading, the big guys, 80% of all the trades that are done are done with computers. And that's what cool trade is all about, allowing us to play in that arena where we've got a computer that can now do this for us. 22 seconds. Now that would constitute uh, getting in and out quickly and we think of the term day trading. But day trading is where you're holding the stock or you're in the position for hours but less than a day. So day trading is less than a day, then there's swing trading. Swing trading is more than a day but typically less than a week. Now you'll notice I'm kind of hedging in regards to the time frame but you get the concept. Scalping is minutes, day trading is hours, swing trading is days, and then long-term trading is weeks or months and in some people's cases years and decades. But I think 30 days plus is a good definition. So long position, 
I mentioned this to you before, you can go long, which is where you're purchasing a stock with the expectation that it's going to go up. We think of that as buy and hold. And when you look at this chart, you can see that I've drawn an arrow right here. This is Apple Computer. You've seen this company before in the news. And you can see where the arrow is going on the chart. You can see that if I bought it at this spot here and then I sold it at this spot here, I did well. Buying and holding, long term. So long means I'm expecting it to go up. Let's go to the other side of that, which is short stock or short position. Now this one's a little bit different, and some of you understand what this is, and some of you this is new for, but when you have that aha moment where all of a sudden you understand, you'll get it, and you'll start to actually short stock and make some money on the way down. But short position or shorting stock is the sale of borrowed stock with the expectation that the stock is going to go lower. So you profit by buying it back at a lower price, and you return the borrowed stock to the broker, and then you keep the difference. So if I sell it at 10, well, what, can, what am I selling? I'm actually borrowing stock from the broker. I'm borrowing it from them. I'm going to sell it at 10. The $10 goes into my account. When the stock drops down to $8, I'm going to use the money that I've got in my account to buy it back at $8, and I'm going to give the stock back to the broker. So if I sold it at 10 and I bought it back at 8, there's $2 difference, and that's your profit. So shorting stock is a great way to make money when the market goes down. By the way, if that was something you understood, terrific. For those of you who didn't quite get it, it's okay. When you turn on Cool Trade, there's an option to go long and an option to go short. Just put it in simulation mode and do some short trading. Watch what it does and learn live in the market as it's doing simulated trades, and you're going to learn by watching it short the stock for you. So if you don't get it now, when you see it, it's, you'll believe it. Now, when you look at this chart right here, same chart we saw with Apple, you can see where the arrow is going now. If we shorted the stock from the high here all the way down to where it is today, you would have made a lot of money on the downside. If you sold it at 700 and you own it today at 450, my goodness, if I had $700 in my account and now I can replace the stock at 450, that $250 per share difference is yours to keep. So there's been a lot of people making a lot of money shorting Apple stock over the last few months in the market. So you can go long, which is typically looking for a move on the upside, and short, which is where you're looking for the stock to go down. So now that you have a little idea of long and short, let's talk about some other terms you've heard before, like bid and ask. Now when we talk about bid, think about it, that's the price somebody's willing to pay. They're bidding, like on an auction or Amazon, right, or uh, eBay, right, where you're looking to bid on the stock, I'm willing to pay this price. The ask is the asking price. So if you're looking to buy, you're typically going to pay somebody's asking price. They own it, they want to sell it, they're asking this price. If you want to buy, well, there's somebody who's bidding, willing to pay you a certain price. So if that confuses you, whatever one is uh, worse for you is the one you're going to buy or sell it at. So if you want to buy it, you're going to pay the high price. If you want to sell it, you're going to pay the low price. So when you, I'll show you in a moment the bid and ask example, but the spread is the difference between those two numbers. So if I can buy it for $9.95 and I can sell it to somebody else for $9.90, there's a five cent difference between those two, that's called the spread. So when you look at this screenshot right here, you can see I've circled the bid and the ask, and this is on Apple, just using the, the same comparison. So the bid here, it says $445.86. Somebody's willing to pay that price, $445.86. And the ask, somebody's willing to sell it for $446. So there's a 14 cent difference. The difference between the bid and the ask is called the spread. Now the spread, think this through, is the broker's profit. The broker is the one that keeps that. They make 14 cents on each share that's traded. Now, 14 cents doesn't sound like a lot, but multiply that times 10 or 20 million, the broker had a nice day every single day. So, now you have an idea of what bid and ask is in the spread. So now let's talk about types of orders. The most common type of an order is what's called a market order. A market order is where you're saying, I just want to buy it, click. And that price you're going to buy it for is the asking price. So whatever is the lowest price that somebody is asking, that's what's going to be transacted, typically. On the other hand, a limit order is where you're saying, I don't want to just buy it, I want to buy it at a specific price. So you put in a number, and if that number on Apple is $445, the order won't be executed, and that's the term, executed, until it reaches that price. So it'll buy it at $445 or less, 
but you won't pay more than that. So that's what a limit order is. So there's a market order and a limit order. So now that we've talked about the bid and the ask, now let's talk about another term that you've heard before. It's called stop loss. One of the things that's very important in trading in the stock market is money management. Understanding money and how to make it is one thing, but managing that and limiting your risk and loss in the market is critically important. So we're going to talk about that in a, in a different training that we're going to do, but let's talk about this term, stop loss. A stop loss is exactly what it sounds like. It stops the loss. So for instance, if you owned Apple Computer at $80 a share, and it ran all the way up to $700 a share, and you said, that's great, but I don't want to lose all of this money in case the stock goes down, you might put a stop loss in at a lower price, maybe $650 a share. So as the stock drops down to $650, it would have sold your stock. It would have stopped the loss. You didn't sell it at the high of $700, but you got out at $650. And today it's trading at $450, and you'd be very happy if you had that stop loss in place. Now, I'm going to be very realistic. Most people don't understand what a stop loss is, and they certainly don't put it in. Their emotions take over, and they simply buy the stock, watch it go up, and they're happy. Then they watch it go down, and they're sad. A stop loss is a way for you to minimize your losses, but as Ed Barsano, the creator of Cool Trade, says, it's a way to guarantee your loss. You're locking in a loss. We don't like to use stop losses. We have a much, a much better way of doing things with Cool Trade on an automated basis. Because frankly, a stop loss is a guaranteed loss, and none of us like that. So we're going to show you how to profit in a much different way with Cool Trade by not having stop losses, but actually profiting by buying the stock as it goes down. Because we know eventually stocks go up and they go down, so we can profit from those moves in both directions. So a stop loss, if you're long, the stock is sold, drops it to a certain price, uh, that's what we do. If you're in a short position, there's a different term. If we sold the stock at 10 and instead of going down, it starts to go up, we want to buy that stock back and cover our position. So we use that term covered that position. So if it didn't go down, we sold it at 10 and we shorted it and we're expecting it to go down, but it goes up to 11 and 12, we might buy it back at 12, which means it cost us more than what we sold it for. We limit the loss in that regard. Now you determine the stop loss based upon your own maximum loss and what you're willing to take on your position uh, if it goes against you. But money management is critically important. Now on the screen you see a chart and it's basically explaining what I just said, the stop loss. You see the stock move from $19 to $20 and plus and then it dropped off. So you might put a stop loss in at the $18 and at that point you're going to sell it at 18. Even if it drops all the way down to 15 or goes to zero, you've limited the loss, you've stopped the loss. So that's what a stop loss is. Now a trailing stop is a little different. A trailing stop is when you have a profitable position and you're going to trail that so that if the stock is moving up and then it starts to turn over and going down, at some point it's going to sell it, but we're not going to predetermine it here. Because if I bought it at 10 and it goes up to 20, I don't want to put my stop loss in at nine. As it goes up from 10 to 20, I might move my stop loss up, so if it drops $1, I'm going to get out. So it's at 20, and my stop loss is at 19, and the stock stops going up and it starts going down. When it hits that 19 on the way down, we're now going to get out. That's called a trailing stop. Now, that's really important, and you can see from the visual right here on the screen, that trailing stop is going to be following your position as you go along. And that's a little hard to do manually, and that's why Cool Trade is very neat. It has just tremendous ways where it has what we call profit protection, and it locks in your profit, and it follows it up dynamically. Ed has programmed this in. He actually explained it to me at one point, and uh, I'm not a computer programmer. I'm so glad that he is. All I know is that he's a genius in the way he programmed it, so it squeezes out every last piece of that money in that profit that I can get, and I love it. So I appreciate that. In regards to this chart here, where you see the same chart with Apple Computer, we bought it here. You can see the line moving up. It reached 700, but if I have a trailing stop, if it drops $10 or $20 or $50, I'm just going to go ahead and put in that trailing stop right here. I would have gotten out here and avoided that huge loss on the way down. Those people who understand those things, where they lock in their profit and they limit their losses, have good money management skills. Now let's talk about lot size. You hear that term, L-O-T, lot size. An even lot is 100 shares. Stocks, you can buy one share at a time. Uh, I remember way back when people would buy one share of maybe Disney stock because they wanted to have that certificate that had the Disney logo on top. 
Well, today they don't even print stock certificates. They actually charge you money if you want the piece of paper. It's all done electronically. So typically when we trade and invest, we're doing it in even lots of 100 shares of at a time. So 100 shares, 200 shares, and so on. You can buy less than that or trade less than that. It's called an odd lot. Entry price. An entry price is the price you paid. You entered the trade at this point. Now, if I bought 100 shares at $10 and I add to that position and buy 100 shares at $9 a week later, there's two entry point, uh, points. So we can average that together and that's called the average cost. So if I bought 100 shares at 10 and 100 shares at 9, the average cost is $9.50 per share. So we're getting some of this terminology down. As I said, there's a lot of terminology here, but I know if you hear it once and again and again, it's going to become more familiar to you. There's another term, GTC, which stands for good till canceled or day only. When you place your trade, it might be a, a trade that you're placing and it's a limit order. I'll buy it or sell it at this price and it's GTC, good until canceled. So that order is going to stay with your broker until that trade is executed. Now keep in mind, good until canceled, your broker might determine that that is 30 days maximum or 60 days maximum. But day only means I'm going to place this trade <clears throat> and if it reaches this price today only, it'll execute it. At the end of the day, the trade goes away. Your net P&L, you'll see this on the cool trade screen, it's very important. The net P&L is your net profit or loss. So during the course of owning this stock, we're going to have a net P&L position. It might be positive, might be negative. That means I paid this and it's worth this. The difference between the two is that profit or loss. And then the today's profit and loss or P&L means on this specific trading day, this Wednesday or this Tuesday, whatever day it is, that day it's profit or loss. So that profit and loss moves on a daily basis. The net profit and loss is the culmination or the accumulation of all of the profit and loss in that trade since you entered that trade. 